What's going on guys? Welcome to the Just Talk Smith channel. If you want to make your truck go from sounding like this to sounding like this Stay tuned and watch this video. This video is gonna be absolutely awesome. Huge shout out to KC Turbos for sending this in so then I can do this install here on the channel. It's a DIY balanced assembly 10 blade turbo kit drop in. Uh, it comes with the 360 rebuild kit so it's gonna come with everything that you need. So with that being said guys, let's go and get into this install. All right guys, so here's everything that you're gonna get from KC Turbos. You're gonna get this right here and this right here. So this right here is your balance assembly. It has the beautiful 10 blade wheel and the absolutely sexy, just dead sexy uh, compressor cold side wheel as well. All we have to do to torque it to spec is make those two paint marks line up. Do not use a torque wrench on this. It is very common if you try to use a torque wrench on here, you will snap um, the actual shaft. Not because they're weak or anything, but if you torque them wrong or torque them past this little blue mark, you can snap these off. So this is reverse threads and this is always gonna be tightening on itself um, during use. So you don't have to worry about it coming loose, but they torque that to spec at the factory um, out in Arizona whenever KC Turbos puts these together and balances them. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back in there. Then right here uh, is the 360 rebuild kit. And this is gonna be all new bearings and seals uh, for the inside of your turbo. So that is absolutely beautiful. Comes with a new seal right there, which we also, I think we'll have an extra one. You're gonna wanna go ahead and pick this kit up. So right there is the part number. So you can go ahead and pause the video and write down that part number. And what this is, is your drain tube on your turbo has these two o-rings on there and they're pressed to fit and then your turbo feed line has that the gasket right there which they actually send um right there they send that and then in here like i said this is everything that you're going to need to do the rebuild kit and this will actually upgrade your oiling inside of your turbo so this is going to oil in 360 degrees of the turbo um and the factor one only does 270 degrees so you're going to gain another, what is that, 90, another 90 degrees of lubrication. Uh, you're also gonna wanna pick up some brake parts cleaner, and uh, I've got some red scotch brot pads as well, and then these wire brushes. Okay guys, so with that being said, gone over all of the uh, actual hard parts, so to say, of everything that you're gonna need for the install. Um, we're gonna go ahead and jump up into the engine bay, and I'm just gonna do each, um, each thing that you have to take loose, I'm not gonna like, video the whole nine yards there's plenty of videos um, if my video isn't good enough you can hop on and find all kinds of videos on how to remove a turbo but i'm going to be doing how to remove the turbo how to disassemble the turbo how to reassemble the turbo and put it back together and then there's going to be some awesome sound clips at the end showing before and after and comparing um, everything and driving the truck and me giving you my honest review on this drop-in a balance assembly kit from KC Turbos. There's not a doubt in my mind that this isn't gonna sound absolutely wicked. All This thing always gets good reviews, guys. Um, so hop on over to KC Turbos and get you one of these on order because you're gonna see me do it today and you're gonna be like, dang, I can do that. Um, and then you're gonna wanna go ahead and install one, especially at the end of the video whenever you hear how good this sounds. Uh, I'll go over each size of bolts and you know what all you have to take apart. Um, once I'm up in the engine bay, so let's go ahead and get up there and start taking this thing apart You probably won't need a six-foot stepladder, but if your truck has a 20-inch lift on it, then uh, I guess that's one thing that you'll need as well It's gonna be a lot easier if you don't have a 20-inch lift So once we're up here in the engine bay, don't pay attention to all my wiring I'm still adding more rock light, so I don't want to put that in a mesh loom just yet um, yours is going to look a little bit different than mine. You're going to have a plastic piece up here that you have to uh, undo the little clips on and raise it up. Um, but I have some mesh loom exactly like that right there that I'm going to put all of these rock light wires in as well to clean that up. But don't pay attention to that. That has nothing to do with this. So you'll take that plastic piece and you'll raise it up. That's going to be it's going to be something that you have to do. 
Um, another thing that you need to do right now, first thing, is disconnect the negative battery terminals on both of your batteries. So then whenever we pull that big turbo out, we don't arc it on the alternator. Because that wouldn't be good. Go ahead and relieve all the pressure slowly, very slowly. Um, hopefully it doesn't have much pressure. <laughs> 6 -0. Uh Anyway. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and loosen up your degas bottle cap and disconnect all of these hoses off of there and just run them over to the side. You don't have to take them completely off. I have a coolant filtration kit, um, so that might be a little bit easier for me. I'm just gonna take that, bend it back, tuck it down in there, just make sure that's not leaking and pouring coolant everywhere. So once you get that, all those hoses disconnected, which I'll show you here in just a second, then we're going to take out the air intake and this hot side intercooler pipe. So you're gonna get down in here and take the pipe out um, off of the intercooler down there. Leave the boots on the pipe. It's gonna make it so much easier putting it back together. So go ahead and do all of that. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a little time lapse and do that myself. And then I will check back in with you after we get all of that done. All right guys, so here's where we are. We have these three items out of the engine bay. So this is the hot side intercooler pipe and the air intake. For this, you don't have to remove the degas bottle. And also a little tip, make sure that you pull up your dipstick. I just now put a new dipstick on there like a couple months ago um, because just like almost any 6.0 that you crawl up underneath the hood, the dipstick's usually broken. So next we're going to tackle the actual turbo itself. Um, both of the clamps were 11 millimeter. And to remove this, all you needed was a flathead um, to undo the clamps. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the turbo feed line and unplug the VGT solenoid. So there's two 10 millimeter bolts on the top, and then down in here, there is one eight millimeter bolt. You can see it right there. I'll go ahead and zoom that in on the screen. So you've got an eight millimeter bolt on the bottom, two 10 mils on the top, and unplug that solenoid. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Okay guys, so we've got the turbo feed line off. We have the VGT solenoid unhooked and this little clamp right here we have that undone and then we've got that wire pulled back there are three bolts that hold this turbo on so right here is the one to the front i'll go ahead and zoom out to show you the reference point on that so right there is going to be another turbo bolt so that's going to be right there in behind you just now seen where that was right there so that's two so right there is the back one that's probably going to be your hardest one to get to so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the phone out to kind of show you where that was. So it's right back in there and straight right there and it's sticking straight up. Got the down pipe clamp off. Got the up pipe clamp broke loose completely. And that was a little tricky. Uh, I used a flathead screwdriver and sprayed just a little bit of PB blaster and then make sure you wipe that off before you put it back together because we don't want it to be a fire hazard. But I'm gonna wipe that down with a dry rag and should be good, brake clean it. Okay, so we got the two front bolts out. I used a 10 millimeter gear wrench uh, open in for those. And then on the back, I used a three inch extension with a 10 millimeter deep wheel. And I went over the top of the down pipe. Uh, like I said, seven sixteenths on both of the exhaust clamps for, for the down pipe and for the up pipe. And then the way that those are designed is they have these three separate sections and those get kind of, uh, you know, they clamp on really, really tight. And that's what, you know, obviously holds it. Um, and these three sections, they get stuck. Like even once you loosen this clamp, that, that these three sections are still stuck on there really, really good. So you have to pry on them with a flathead screwdriver. Um, I put a little bit of PB blaster on that side. This side, I didn't need any. I put just a little bit of PB blaster and then of course I wiped it off and brake clean it. Um, whenever I go back together. But we've got the turbo ready to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up and pull this baby straight out. Okay, so from here, we should be able to lift it up off of the drain line. 
So just pick it straight up. Okay. So now that we've picked it straight up, we should be able to bring it forward. And then there's our uh, very stubborn clamp off of the up top. Up and out of here. So now I'm gonna have to get down because I am knee deep in the engine bay. Alright guys, so we got the turbo out of the truck, so now we're going to go set it up on the workbench and start the tear down. Alright guys, so we've got the turbo up here on the bench. Um, these are 12.8 millimeters, so we're going to go ahead and start with that. Gonna have a fresh whirly spurly 20 twir twirly boy. Okay guys, so I went ahead and took the heat shield off. That was three eight millimeter bolts. And then I've got the compressor housing off. That was that was six uh, 12 point eight millimeter bolts. And then I got the clamp off. Same as the other clamps, it's a seven sixteenths. And you take the heat shield off so you get the clamp off a little easier. So now we're just working on separating the uh, hot side from this part up here. So right here's where that clamp was and we went ahead and marked the clamp and marked this so we know where to put that clamp back. You can see right here, we've got it broke almost loose. Um, we've just been tapping it, put the rag down and then tap it just with a normal hammer. And um, this is of course after you get the clamp off. So I'm just gonna do the final taps right here with you on here. Right there. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem to mar it up or anything. We used a rag on a few of them and didn't use a rag on a few of them, but it seems to work good either way. Now I take that off. Set that down. So right here is your unison ring. And it uh, looks to be baked onto my... It's supposed to be down here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so right here is your actuator that moves the unison ring, which opens your veins. And what you're looking for is your unison ring sits inside that little slot right there. So we've got the unison ring and you can see right there, it's grooved out a little bit. Um, so that's what you're kind of looking for and that's not a good thing. All right, so we went ahead and got this all cleaned up went around through here with some sandpaper and cleaned this uh, mating surface right here. Cleaned all of this, got all of that nice and smooth again. Clean, no carbon buildup. Then I went through and cleaned both sides of these veins, top and bottom, and then I wiped them off a little bit on the sides. Those, it doesn't contact anything on the sides, so those two pieces are done and cleaned. Then I got this broken loose with a 14 millimeter on the cold side. Hot side, I just used some adjustables and got it on there just fine. It wasn't super tight. So now I can just spin that off. And then that's going to expose four 12.8 millimeters, which I'm gonna go ahead and zip out. Can you see all that? Yeah. So whenever you pull this out, 
your thrust washer is going to be on the bottom so you can go ahead and pull that out. We won't be using that. And then you can pull out that piece. And now you can clean this piece. So we're going to get that cleaned up and all spick and span. Okay, so as that's in there, you're going to have two bearings and then a spacer. So, let me wipe this off. So whenever you pull this off, this is what it's going to look like. You've got your bearing right here, then you've got a spacer right here, and another bearing. Okay guys, so it's actually a couple days later now, and we just got in uh, the new unison ring. Can't remember where I last took off from. But we ran into some issues, and you're most likely not going to run into this issue. This has nothing to do with KC turbos whatsoever. Um, this was a pre-existing turbo issue on my truck. Um, so on this bearing housing assembly, uh, there's a plate. And this plate, one of the bolt heads that actually came off at, at one point in the truck's life. Um, and that caused the whole assembly to run kind of uh, at an angle, if you will. Uh, just a little bit. So all of these were angled. And this ring piece was warped and bent. Because I guess whenever that head popped off, it kind of got loose. Um, I've done a full video explaining those issues. It was the video um, that I posted, I think, two videos ago. Um, but anyway, nothing to do with KC turbos. We took out our VGT solenoids. You won't have to do that. So, um, But that was just a normal 8mm, and then you pry it out with a screwdriver. Easy, simple. So we've got a brand new... We have a brand new one. So that's absolutely awesome ready to rock and roll um the only thing that we have to do is right here in this hole drop in our vgt solenoid so i'm gonna go ahead and push that in okay so now i'm just going to go ahead and tighten down this eight millimeter bolt to start reassembling the turbo so first thing that you're going to want to do is pay close attention right here on the end of this. There is a blue paint line, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to break this loose. Um, we're going to take this apart, and then I'm going to go ahead and get out the 360 rebuild kit. And remember, whenever you're breaking this apart, the threads are opposite, so righty-loosey, lefty-tidy. Gonna go ahead and spin it and take the wheel off. Set that over here. Slide these two pieces off. Set that over here. Then we're going to go ahead and open up our 360 rebuild kit and go ahead and start installing some of these seals. So the first seal that you're going to install is this little sir clip. And this is going to go in the bottom. See if you can see that. This is going to go in the bottom line right there the one that i have it in right there okay so we have that on there so that is in the bottom line okay guys so we've got this seal installed so next up we're going to get one of our bearings slide that down on there then we're going to take the spacer slide that down on there and then we're going to put the next bearing. So, so far we have this seal down here at the bottom. One bearing, spacer, one bearing. Okay guys, and what I've done was I just took one of the empty compartments on the 360 rebuild kit, poured a little bit of oil in there, so now I can use my finger and just dab it in that oil. Spin your finger around on this seal, just get it all nice and oiled up. Okay, so we've got that oiled up. Let's go ahead and put that where it goes. Also guys, I forgot to show this, but you wanna go ahead and put some oil 
um, on this shaft before you slide your bearings down on there. So go ahead and put you some oil right there. And put you some oil down here on this spacer as well. Okay, now we can put that back in there. Okay guys, so next up we're going to get these two pieces. So you have your thrust washer, and this is the 360 degree thrust washer from the 360 rebuild kit. I went ahead and dipped uh, both of these pieces down in a little bit of oil, and you wanna take this flat side, and then on your main slotted side, just set that down in there. So it's gonna look like that. Show you that again. You got these lines. Got this piece, just drop that right down in there. And then this side is gonna be flipped over and that's gonna go directly on there just like that. And then that's going to drop right down into its spot and look just like that. Okay guys, and now before we go ahead and install this housing on there, we're gonna get the other seal, little circlip out of the KC Turbos rebuild kit and we're gonna put it onto this piece right here. So you just wanna slide that down until that clips into place. So that's going to clip into place right there. You can see it on that seal. Then you're gonna flip this over and put that into there. So then that's going to clip in right there. All right. Okay, so you've got your seal on the outer part. You've got this piece installed in there. We're gonna take this arrow and point it up just like that. Go ahead and drop that on. And now install with the four bolts that Casey Turbo supplies you in the kit. So go ahead and snug those up in a crisscross pattern and then we are ready to go ahead and lube up this o-ring and install this o-ring okay so i went ahead and installed that new seal on the turbo as you can see so now we're going to set this down and go ahead and install our new kc turbos wheel and remember all we have to do is to get these marks to line up. So I have a 13 millimeter opening wrench on this and I'm holding it with an adjustable wrench on the back side. And all we want to do is just line these marks up perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and watch this and I'm just gonna tighten it until those marks are lined up absolutely perfect again. So now that I've got those marks lined up perfectly, she spins super free. Go ahead and show you that right there. Then our next piece, so right here, you see the little L right there? So that part is going to mate up with this part right here that I'm tapping on. That spot will go with that flat spot. You're gonna flip that over and it will align perfectly. You can go ahead and start reinstalling your hardware and tighten these also in a crisscross pattern. So we have that completely back together. Spins freely, looks awesome, absolutely no play. Flip that over. And now we can go ahead and start assembling the exhaust side. So what I've done next is go ahead and put your unison ring inside of your exhaust housing. And uh, we're gonna get ready to set this piece down onto the exhaust housing. So guys, whenever you're putting this housing back on, you wanna have this actuator straight up and down, and then there's also an alignment pin right here. So in order to get the correct distance between those, you want to have your veins um, open. You don't want to have them closed. So you want the alignment mark right here in the exhaust housing and the unison ring to be furthest apart. So you don't want them close together, you wanna to pull that unison ring over and make those far apart and then just make sure that your actuator is straight. 
with ease, absolutely no issues. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and align your clamp and tighten the clamp down. Okay guys. So we have the turbo back together. It is sitting over there looking all pretty. So we are going to go ahead and throw it back into the truck. And then uh, I probably won't video putting it back into the truck because you know I already showed you how to take it apart. So it's just all reverse from there. Um, we lost, uh, there's quite a bit of oil in the turbo, so I don't really know if it'll be enough to affect the oil level, but always before you start your vehicle, even if you haven't worked on it, you should check the oil level every now and then. One second, guys. I know I told you next time you see me, we'd have the turbo on, but I actually got ahead of myself before I put the turbo back on. Um, I have to show you this apart number. So before you put your turbo back on, go ahead and pick up this from Ford. It is a turbo reseal kit. So you're gonna get one blue o-ring two yellow ones so we're going to go ahead and take off both of these yellow old worn out o-rings and put on these two new ones make sure to use um, some oil whenever you do that so they reseal better and on our turbo oil feed line uh, right there you see it the blue o-ring so we're gonna go ahead and put that brand new blue o-ring on this and here was that part number again Okay, now I think that I've covered pretty much everything. Always remember in the comments below. Ask any questions, I will help as much as possible. So if there's anything that I didn't cover in this video, which I've tried to pinpoint and cover every single little thing, but if there's anything, uh, any questions or concerns, comment down below and I will answer best as possible. With that being said, next time you see me, the truck will be on and we're gonna start it up and compare some sound clips. This is about to be insane. Okay guys, we have it in. I haven't started it yet. But we have it installed. I'm gonna go ahead and put the truck in neutral and roll it forward to up here and then I'll set the camera up and start it. Okay guys, so I've got the truck rolled forward now. We're gonna go ahead and do the very first startup. I want to hear it with you guys. Cause here on the channel, each and every one of you subscribers is like family to me. We finally surpassed 6,000 subscribers. So, so pumped about that road to 10K subscribers. And then after that, 20K, 30K, 40K, whatever. We're gonna see where this goes, but I appreciate each and every one of you all. And let's go ahead and do this first startup. Once it hits high idle though, we'll really be able to hear it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it outside so I don't kill myself in here. So one second. So like I said, my truck, with the tune that it has, I'm running a gearhead tune, and even with the other turbo, I could just tell. Um, the before and after clips in this video of idle aren't really gonna be fair for the KC turbos because it was very, very cold out the day that I took them. So it was in high idle, which is right at 1,000 RPMs. So to compare those a little bit better, I'm gonna rev it up and hold the idle at a thousand rpms and then that's that would make it more fair if that makes sense um, but i'm going to go ahead and rev it up a couple times uh, and then we'll do some side by side comparisons but it's warm out today it's like 50 something so i don't think that the truck's going to go into high idle um, i've let it sit here for a second and it's not going into high idle automatically so i'm going to rev it up a couple times and hold it at a thousand rpms and see how it sounds
I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out and just go up my street once or twice and set the camera up on the tripod so you all can hear what this thing sounds like driving by. Guys, holy crap, this made a world of difference. I haven't got to drive the truck uh, like at higher speeds or do any launches or takeoffs or anything like that just yet, but we're going to in this video, so stay tuned. Uh, the same side-by-side -side clips, comparisons, I just wanted to go ahead and let you all hear it um, in this video. And I know you all heard it at the beginning of the video as well, but I am so happy. Huge shout out to KC Turbos. Y'all go check them out. The link to this product, the exact product, will be in the description box down below. Like, go pick one of these up if you have a 04 and a half and up all the way through 07 60 f250 and they also have other f250 uh the 64 67 turbos all kinds of turbos for duramax cummins's um for the cummins all kinds of diesel truck turbos it's gonna be all for right now we're gonna go ahead and swap to here in a little bit and do some side-by-side -side clip comparisons then so stay tuned for that here they go You can't argue with that guys. Go out there and get you one of these. Okay guys, so I am currently driving the truck. I've been driving it for a while. Listen to this. Oh my gosh. It's so it's so awesome. Like the throttle response feels like a hair different. I th it's definitely in a good way. I don't mean to be like that guy. Like I know it's just a 10 blade bounce assembly swap. It's so, the whistle. So awesome. But uh, anyway, the whistle is awesome. I'm so happy with it. Thank you so much, Casey Turbos. Uh, I'll definitely be doing that stage two someday after we uh, do some more upgrades to the truck and uh, we get some injectors and stuff on the way. So I'll definitely be doing some more stuff from Casey Turbos. I highly, highly recommend them. Um, like I said, just huge shout out to Casey Turbos. If you have an 05 through 07 and you're not wanting to do nothing crazy, but you like to get a little more turbo sound, um, and it does seem to push like a hair more boost, like maybe one or two PSI that I've never seen before, and you know that's just from driving it just a little bit. Um, so of course, depend on your tune and stuff. I'm sure it would be um, even better. Uh, but you know that's just com that's just turbo only. You know, running the same tune. Um, and then not only that, but with the 360 thrush washer um, and the uh, the cold side wheel as well on the cold side, uh, changing out that wheel, it's just a lot more efficient and the turbo is most likely going to last longer uh, with just all of the updates and upgrades and little tweaks and stuff here and there that KC Turbo's integrated into this 10 blade balance assembly. Um, so yeah, 10 out of 10, Justin Hawksmith approves this. I am so happy. I am so pumped. Uh, the truck drives better than it ever has before. Uh, I love the sound of it. I love everything about it. I'm super happy with it. Um, yeah, and I, I really had no issues with the install, guys. I mean, the install was was super easy. Uh, literally, that intercooler pipe, the intake, three bolts on the turbo, two, uh, three bolts holding the drain or the uh, the feed line on, and then literally just the uh, the clamp on the down pipe and up pipe. And you all already seen that part of this video, but it was it was very easy um, to take off the turbo. And then as far as putting it back together, as long as you use all the alignment tabs and everything, I mean, you really can't put the turbo back together wrong. 
uh, but just mark everything before you take it apart clean it all really good put it back together with new KC turbos parts and I mean you're set up but that's going to be all for today's video, guys. I really appreciate you all watching. Don't forget, get down there. It really helps me out if you click that subscribe button. Leave a like. Drop a comment as well if you have any questions. Um, but it really helps out the channel a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we're, you know, growing more and more each month. So that gets me so excited, guys. I cannot wait to hit 10K subscribers. Um, I really, really enjoy making YouTube content for you guys. Uh, but, yeah. Like I always say at the end of my videos, always remember everybody starts out as a nobody, and I will see you all in the next video. This was my video on the 10 blade balance assembly from KC Turbos, and I loved it. Go get you one. Peace.